Broadcasting from Union Point on planet Earth, this is the Union Point Podcast. Kicking off our fan series, we're chatting about perhaps the biggest news in the Orville fandom since Season 3's renewal announcement. I'm talking about the one thing that has caused Seth MacFarlane to curse the name of Avis publicly out of sheer excitement. Or should I say, endorsement. It's a virtual reality game that lets you step foot on the decks of the Orville. Stick around. I'm going to be speaking with the project's lead from the game studio responsible for the Orville Interactive Fan Experience. I'm speaking with Dan Govier. He's the project lead at the Orville Interactive Fan Experience at Messy Desk Interactive. Welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be on. First off, how did your ragtag group of genius miscreants get started? Well, I guess um, it all began with a bunch of geeks just hanging out on the internet, trying to get us some Star Trek meshes. Uh, and slowly we kind of evolved into a a semi-organized group um, <laughs> doing the Enterprise D. Um, yeah. yeah, it just kind of a, it just evolved from there. Mentioning the Enterprise D, so those who are not aware, Stage 9, you may be familiar with the name, CBS and Cease and Desist comes to mind. You and your team have been through a lot, Dan. Um, you've had some time to process it. How, at this point, do you feel about that whole thing? Well, to be honest, uh, we like to look on it as an opportunity. Um, you know, it was a good practice run uh, at managing a project of that kind of scale. Um, you know, obviously, we would have loved to continue doing the enterprise deep, but it just wasn't possible. But luckily, um, there is a, another show out there which holds all the ideals that we hold dear to heart. So it's an obvious choice to move on to the Orville. Is it just me, or does sometimes it seems as though Avis shone upon you? <laughs> as a fan creation, Dan, Stage 9, and now, of course, the Oroville Interactive Fan Experience, uh, they're very much a labor of love for you and your team. So uh, when the cease and desist happened, a lot of us would simply give up. You know, your dreams are like shot down in an instant like that. We were all really, really excited about what Stage 9 was doing. You were gaining momentum and then suddenly, snap, CBS shut it down. So can I just ask, like on a personal level, for yourself and for your team, what kept you guys going? I think grim determination <laughs> initially. Um, you know, we, we, we explored every avenue we possibly could to try and you know, keep the project alive. Um, and in the end, I mean, e even after it was obvious that it wasn't going to go anywhere, you know, we thought to ourselves, you know, a lot of talented guys, and it would be crazy to sort of walk up across. So, so I think we're losing you there. If you could just, if you just watch, um, we seem to be losing you, but I think you're back. Uh, sorry, yeah, internet issues. There you go. Yeah, so, um, you know, we had a really talented team of developers and it would have been crazy to break that team up and go and do yeah. a thing. So, you know, we decided, you know, let's stick together. Let's do something else. Let's try and make the next project even more special than the last. Let's see what shows come along that uh, are not made by CBS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dan, you guys made the announcement on Monday, and since then we've been leaking screenshots through our Twitter account to fans of the Orville, just so that they can see what's coming from Messy Desk. Um, how has the response been from the fans for you guys? Wow, it's it's been humbling, honestly. It's been extreme. I mean, we, we thought fans would probably get a kick out of what we were doing, um, but it exploded overnight. I think we had an extra 350 people join our Discord just in, in one afternoon. Wonderful. Um, yeah, just absolutely mental. And, and, you know, honestly, we were so excited, this project. You know, seeing the fan excitement as well just drives us that little bit harder. To make it. And how about the creators of the Orville? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how they've responded to your fan project? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, we, we initially made a few phone calls 
you know, hit some dead ends, didn't really know who to talk to. Um, but in the end, we got a hold of Tom on Reddit. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and Tom's a huge, huge figure you know, in the community. He does such an amazing job of, of getting you know, the message out there. You know, and he deals with all the things. You know, he goes above and beyond. He represents, doesn't he? He really represents to us what uh, what a community ambassador should should be like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and we sent him a pitch video, and he sent it back, and just said, "Wow, <laughs> you know, I, I've showed this to all the guys, and, and everyone loves it." And then we thought, you know what? I think this can go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So, can I ask the, that pitch video? Was it stage nine? Was it NCC seventeen oh one D, or had you been working on something to do with the Orville? And so, yeah, we actually started work on the project um, about October, the beginning of October last year. Um, so we had some of the, from the first deck fleshed mm-hmm. out, bridge, ready rooms, corridors. You know, we just did a, a quick fly around to show what we um, And yeah, so we had a fair bit done quite quick. It's since your launch, or since the announcement of the coming launch, um, what has been the response of the creators of the show? Uh, they, they've been really supportive. Um, you know, they, they can't throw any kind of official backing behind it because yeah. you know, it's not licensed. Um, you know, we hope maybe one day we can get a license, but right now, you know, they're they're fans of the project as much as we're fans of the Orville. You know, so we've got a, like a a fan to fan relationship. You know, there's nothing official going on there, um, mm. but it's great that they love it, and it's great that they get a kick out. And um, you know, that means the world to us. Isn't that cool? So behind the scenes, being a fan project, it's not officially endorsed, but what kind of, you know, what kind of blessing do you have from the creators or what kind of okay do you have to go ahead and do this? And I, I guess the best we've achieved is we haven't been told not to do the project. <laughs> um, and, you know, we've, we had a meeting with Fox, you know, Fox know who we are. You know, they know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, they haven't given, you know, an official sort of green light or that. But, um, you know, we have been allowed to go ahead and do a fan project, completely non-commercial, for fans, by fans. Uh, you know, and on that basis, they're happy for it to exist. Very good. Uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. Uh, it's time for us to take a really quick break, Dan. Uh, when we get back, we're going to see some more in-game renders, and we're going to find out details about the game itself from the project lead, Dan Govier. And ultimately, we're going to get to the bottom of how you can set your virtual foot on the decks of the Orville. Stick around. Let's talk about the underlying technology. I, I hear you're using a current version of Unreal Engine 4. So, Dan, what has that meant for both you in the production end, uh, and by you I mean uh, Messy Desk, um, the entire team, uh, and what does it mean for the fans as well? Well, it's, um, it's a really, it's a huge platform, Unreal Engine, it's really well supported. Um, and it does things like VR out of the box really, really well. Yeah, and it's those um, it's those core systems which we're relying on quite heavily. Um, you know, and, and Unreal Engine is, you know, the blueprint interface is something that we're very fond of. You know, you can prototype system tools really, really. Throw it all. Um, you know, it's robust. It, it's mostly stable. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, it's good to work with, and also it's got quite a lot of cross-platform support. So things like Steam VR and and stuff are supported out of the box, which. Mm. Which is a big. Yeah, that's huge. Um, you made the announcement and posted the video on Monday, and um, it was really exciting, of course, for myself and Sasha uh, to see our likeness featured. Um, so I suggested a couple of minor adjustments to our models just to make them look a little more true to us. And you said that, in fact, players are going to be able to modify their own character models in game. Can you tell us about that? Sure. I guess you could think of it as like an MMO-style character customization. 
So, you know, sort of body width and um, different facial styles, hairstyle, uniform colors, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, maybe extend it to other things like hats and stuff. Mm -hmm. The old stage nine Christmas hat. In <laughs> I, I spotted that. That was one of the Easter eggs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to have multiplayer? It is planned for day one. I mean, we have tested it and it is working. Mm -hmm. um, it needs a little bit more stress. Things I'm sure is, um, obviously we want to release something that works well and not something that works slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what kinds of... Sorry, I, I know our connection between Earth and, uh, and Europa is uh, a little shaky tonight, but um, I lost you just at the end there. Uh, what kinds of uh, multiplayer should we expect, Dan? Like, uh, are we talking deathmatch? Are we talking collaborative? Sure. Well, um, initially it's going to be um, literally just hang out with your friends, explore the ship together, um, you know, just have some adventures. Um, but you'll also be able to, to you know, pick up a pistol, shoot your friend in the face, because <laughs> kind of <thing's> fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, you know, there'll, there'll be all kinds of shenanigans you can get up to in multiplayer. And um, we're quite keen to, to make a playground um, for the players to make their own adventures, in addition to some scripted stuff as well. Oh, that sounds awesome. I wasn't expecting the multiplayer aspect. Do we need to um, set up a server? Are there going to be publicly accessible servers? I can imagine that Union Point is going to launch one, uh, if that's an available option. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're looking at Steam as a distribution platform. Okay. Um, so, so we'll be using the Steam multiplayer functionality. Um, oh, great. Great. So you should be able to direct connect with your friends on Steam. Peer to peer. Um, if there are some potential licensing issues there with it being an existing IP, um, whether or not we have permission to use Steam, but that's, that's the number one plan. Okay. If not, we're looking at something like a Minecraft model. So you could maybe run your own server, your friends can, uh, you know, or just join an existing. Hmm. That could be cool. And what other features can we expect uh, that will really get us excited as far as like out of the box at launch day? What are we, uh, what are we going to see? Um, Wow. It's difficult to say because we're going to do a, a staged release. So much like Stage 9, um, we'll release an initial version of the project. Yeah. Um, and that project will evolve over time. So we'll add more features, you know, go along the line. Um, hopefully, we'll have the environment simulator in and on launch where you can load different sim. We've cool. got the idea is that we'll hide the, the actual chips that power the different sims around the ship. So you've got to find... Hmm. Take them back to the nearest east sim, plug it in, see what it runs. <laughs> There's plenty of opportunity for Easter eggs there. Very good. Uh, what, what kind? When I think about these features that are going to be coming, I mean, it sounds like the you're you're planning to launch a pretty well, like fully playable product right on day one. Is that right? Pretty much. Um, a lot of the shit won't be fleshed out uh, initially. Mm -hmm. Again, same with stage nine. So we'll, we'll probably go deck by deck. Um, there are, I'm going to say 10 decks yeah. so far. I mean, it's a bit of a squeeze. It looks like that staircase goes down about a thousand decks. <laughs> yeah, it looks more than it is. It's only 10. Yeah. Okay. How are you finding the size of the ship compared to NCC 1701D? Is, is this uh, it's a lot, a lot smaller? Yeah. I think in terms of internal volume, you're looking something about the size of Voyager. Okay. So it's not a big ship. Um, but it's big enough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be able to tour it in a very short amount of time. What kind of hardware requirements are there uh, going to be for this? Uh, less than Stage 9. It's a lot more optimized than Stage 9. So if you ran Stage 9 pretty well, then you should be absolutely fine for the order bill. Um, I've, I've personally got a GTX 960, mm -hmm. um, and I usually pull 50 frames a second most places. So. But for me, it's working fine on a relatively mid-range graphic. Great. Uh, if I don't have a VR headset, am I still going to be able to play okay? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to support first person and VR, completely optional. Um, we're hoping this time to get both in the same release. So as before, you had to download two separate versions. Um, so hopefully we'll get those combined. Oh, wouldn't um, that be fantastic? Oh, that's great. Um, speaking of like versions and releases, are we going to be um, seeing this project available for Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, or are you targeting a particular platform? 
So initial Windows, Mac, and Linux. So all three platforms supported. Great. Um, we got a lot of people requesting PSVR. Um, yes, we'd like to, but the dev kit's quite expensive. Um, obviously, for a free free fan project, funds are always going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. But yes, if we can, we will. Um, and then yes, we might have to do a, a more cut down version for mobiles. But uh, I think Stage Nine was working briefly on mobile at one. So it's something we'll explore. Cool. Yeah, that that raises an interesting kind of situation that you have is that it, it could cost a lot of money to implement some of the features that fans want to see, but you can't charge for the product because it's a fan production, correct? Correct. So, so how do you, how, how do you make that work? Like, is this all out of pocket or is this something, is there some way that the community can back it? Uh, right now it's all literally out of pocket. Um, as you said, this, this is a labor of love. You know, if we need a feature, we implement that feature. It's you know, how long it takes or how hard it is. It's kind of irrelevant because if we want it bad enough, you know, hmm. we put it in the game. Um, and that goes for the community as well. If the community at large has a particular feature that they're really keen on seeing in the game, then we'll do our best to get it in there. Very good. Um, and speaking of the fact that you can't uh, can't monetize it, how much will it cost us to install? And I know the answer, and I think that you watching it uh, at home know the answer, but how much is this going to cost us? Uh, free. Completely free. <laughs> Completely free. Uh, so what still has to happen? I mean, we're, we're, we know that you're hoping for early summer release 2019. What has to happen still before you can release the game to the public? So we're actually um, looking to release a set tour. So, um, so the order was set on stage 15, box stage 15. Um, and we're going to recreate stage 15 as best we can. Uh, so it's just basically the first two decks of the ship. Oh. And we hope to have that up maybe three to four weeks for people. Um, but it's literally just the first two decks. Bit of a taster, a bit of a demo. This is what we're up to. So you're going to tease us um, even more? <laughs> I want to tour the whole ship. And that's just to give the fans, you know, something to play while they wait for us to release the, the proper version one. Yeah. Um, because we need to, to completely dismantle that and rearrange everything um, so it makes more sense as a proper working starship. The, the layout on the soundstage is not particularly for, for a starship. Well, that sounds great. It's going to be nice that, uh, you know, I, I love that you're at least giving us a taste that we can get in and actually try it, see how our hardware handles it, and get ready for what's next. Do you have any particular needs in, in your uh, organization um, that uh, perhaps somebody in our community can support if, uh, you know, if you're looking for a particular talent or skill set? Are there any of those that are still um, maybe lacking or perhaps could use a little bit of help? Yeah. Yeah. Um so we recently took on someone that we found on Twitter. Um, you know, if, if there's someone out there um, and they're doing you know, quality Orville-related work just as a passion project itself, then that's exactly the kind of person we bring onto the team. Mm -hmm. um, because it's someone that's, you know, they're already into the Orville. They already love the idea. You know, they feel that creative need to get modeling and drawing and code. And it's those kind of people we're looking for. So, yeah, I mean... If you want to love the audio, we'd love to hear. And are they best to reach out to you on Twitter, or what's uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, Discords. Discord. Uh, we spend all day pretty much hanging. Out Discord, <laughs> so hit us up on there. All right, and we'll post links for you. So if you're watching this and wondering, okay, how can I find this? We're going to post links below. And of course, if you, uh, if you follow us on Twitter, uh, union underscore point, uh, we will have those links for you there as well. Dan, thank you so much to you and the team at Messy Desk Interactive uh, for your countless hours. I mean, I can't even imagine all the work that you have put into this for the fans of the Orville. And an extra special thanks to those who create the Orville for allowing this fan creation to go forward. You truly do remind us, sci-fi fans, what a real community ambassador should look like. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us uh, on Twitter. We've got a Discord set up, and all the links, as I mentioned, will be uh, available through our Twitter profile. So that's probably the best way at this point to find out uh, more about Union Point. So that's it for this time. From Union Point on planet Earth, Jaloja! Yeah.